Good morning. So yesterday, on a beautiful Sunday morning, I sat down to film two videos, a big wash shootout and a, a comparison between two different talk boxes. I sat down after I had some beautiful pancakes with Nutella on it. And uh, yeah, I uh, didn't look in the mirror afterwards, so the video you're about to see is 45 minutes of me having Nutella on my chin. Um, you're free to laugh about that, but I choose to uh, not film 45 minutes of me talking about was and talk boxes. Actually, it's over an hour um, again. So um, enjoy me looking like a complete idiot. Well, it shouldn't be anything different than usual. <laughs> Well, hello there, YouTube people. Uh, kind of a special video today. Not very prepared, because I don't really know too many things. Uh, but I wiggle my way through this with you. Wah pedals. Um, I had a crybaby, probably one of my first pedals. It died at some point, as most probably do. There are certain questions we have about wahs. One. Uh, how much does it kill the tone? Because we know a lot of wah pedals are tone killers. Um, how sturdy is it? How big is it? How heavy is it? Does it have any extra features? For me, a big question is how far is the sweep? Meaning when you're heel down, how low does it wah on the guitar? That rhymes. Um, which actually means the wah pretty much is a bandpass filter. So it takes off the low end, which is here, and it takes off the high end. And at some point it has a, an emphasis. And that point is where you are with the wah. I'm gonna do this a lot. Um, so that emphasis is where you're sweeping. So how much does it roll off around that emphasis point? Is it very narrow? Is it still a lot of frequencies? Um, and how far down can you affect that frequency? How far down, actually here, and how far up? Which will affect, let's say you have a seven or eight string. Can you actually wah the lower notes? As Steve Weiss, Bad Horsey, which I have hidden somewhere but not in this video, because uh, I couldn't find it, um, is such a wah that goes fairly low. Um, then, on the high range, when you're noodling around high E string, 12th, 13th, 14th, 15th fret, can you actually still hear the wah effect? Or can you not actually go high up into those frequencies? That is something we will look at, or hopefully with my videos you will be able to distinguish. Um, can it do the waka chaka waka chaka waka chaka shaft effect? How cool can it funk, which is something you do with clean sounds. Um, so in those videos that you will hear, uh, you will see, uh, you will hear, see, see here, um, me playing low notes, like a, a low F, G and A power chord and sweeping to see how much the effect is there. And we will go pretty damn high on the uh, like 15th fret on the high E string and see or hear whether or not there is a Y effect still happening. Um, then of course we're doing the same thing with distorted sounds. Now distorted sounds, you hear the effect technically a little bit more because there's more frequencies to wah, to go through. Um, what else? Uh, all I know about the wah history is that this company, the real McCoy, um, it's kind of where it started because they wanted to do the sound of a trumpet mute or a trombone mute, one of those. You know, the wah 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 They wanted to do that for a guitar uh, or maybe organ, I don't know. It's some kind of instrument back in the days. Um, 
So the real McCoy is a company that still makes the original one, which in this case doesn't have any frills on it, but we'll get to that. Um, yeah, that's happening. Uh, CryBB, of, of course, is our point of reference because it's inexpensive. It's one of the first ones out there. And um, there are many different CryBabies, Slash has one in Cantrell and Petrucci. Uh, we're going to go through some. The videos that you're going to see, and this is very important. I want to thank my friends at Toman a bunch. I do the demos for Toman for the website. Which means the videos you're going to see, I didn't shoot for you, because that would be an insane amount of work and I'm too lazy. I actually shot for Toman and I did get paid for those. They will show up on the product pages of those was. And I asked them if I can use excerpts of those videos for this video, which allows me to have 18 or 19, I think 18 was, um, as a shootout. Because I wouldn't have 18 was here. How, where do I get them? So... Um, thanks to Toman. If I uh, just use the clips that I have here, it is already 56 minutes only for those clips without me commenting on them, which means I will cut these down. If you want to see the full clip, which is always between three and five minutes for each war, please go to the Toman website to their product page, links below to all of them. Click on it and watch that video. It is the video that you're going to see here, just longer and in more detail. Also, you see, you know, specs and all that stuff. Thanks to Stefan and Toman for allowing me to use those, because, you know, they're not mine, they're buying them from me. Um, thank you for that. And we're going to start with the crybaby. So let me comment a little bit on that. Well, it's... I don't have this here, it's went back to Toman. Um, it is like the real McCoy, in, out, 9 volt. Uh, n nothing else, 89 bucks, and it's pretty much, you know, the classic. So let's start with that as a baseline, um, has a good weight to it. It's a crybaby, you know. Go. jumping up quite a bit in price. We had 165 euro for the Slash Crybaby. Now, frankly, I can't tell you how that differs from the sound of the actual Crybaby. I don't know. Listen, I'm not going to tell you because I don't know. Um, I assume that Slash simply likes the Crybaby, wanted a signature, so he got it painted differently. And I think that's what it is. Um, this has a battery compartment, easily accessible, which is nice if you don't want to run your 9 volt. Come on, and now I can't close it anymore. Here we go, here we go. Um, it does have a very, very cool aged look for which I think they paint it in red and black and then file it down. Um, it has in rubber stamp, which is very cool. The Slash logo right there. That is very nice. It, it's, it's, a cool, it's a cool thing to have on the board. And I think some of us just want something cool to have on the board. It has a good amount of weight, so this will add quite a bit to your board. I should have had a scale here. That would have been so smart. Yeah, well, you know what? Would have been. Um, I'm sure you find the weight of these somewhere else. It's got, it's hefty. Um, plumper. You know, chunky. Uh, what it does have is a light here and a light here. A lot of wars don't have indicators of whether it's on or not, like the freaking crybaby, which is annoying. But this does. Having an, indi an indicator like some of the ones coming up underneath here is kind of pointless because you don't see it from above. 
having a small indicator here is nice, but it would be nice if it's actually something bigger, she said. Um, having a big blue LED here and here should mean that when it's on, it's illuminating the board, depending on how, you know, lit the stage is. So you should really have a good visual. Other than that, I kind of think this is frills. This is a cool paint job. This is the name Slash on it. Uh, other than that, it's, it's, it's got LEDs and it's a crybaby. Do you really want to spend that much more money? Well, listen. the slash, the Jerry Cantrell from Dunlop um, is a lot of frills. It's got this aged copper look. It's cool looking. Okay, If you're into pedal porn, this is a nice pedal with a really cool rubber cut out graphic in different colors. Um, it's got song lyrics at the bottom. This is a fanboy wah. Uh, the only difference to a crybaby uh, in tone... Pfft, I couldn't really tell that it's majorly different, um, is that it has this really cool, also aged looking knob right here. That's also an aged knob. Um, which on heel down, no, on toe down position says how much high end. So this is a lot more high end and now you can roll off the high end pretty much, I think, how far it sweeps or how much high end you have, uh, which is nice. Very likely you pretty much have that in one position, likely in the middle. I think. So, nice, but probably not something you fiddle around with. It doesn't make it a very flexible wah. Clocks in at 179. I think for fans of Jerry Cantrell, very cool. But, listen. Lance, the John Petrucci crybaby, it's called a crybaby, which is weird because uh, to me it's not, um, is a straightforward crybaby, except that it's in that dark chrome look. So it's got a small LED here, I think that's blue, and an LED here, 
um, to indicate that it's on, which is nice. The thing that to me sticks out the most about this thing is that the switch is soft. On, on a lot of wires you have to go, oh my god, click, oh my god, and really lean into it. Here, I can do it with my hand, click. It's a very easy clicky switch. I love that. Why don't they all have that? Um, so again, on first glance, very normal crybaby, just like the other one's battery compartment. However, on the inside are trim pots. You can change the sweep, the cue, the everything. You can tailor this exactly to your liking. I didn't do that in the video. For the tour my videos, we use the pedals the way they are. We don't go into internal trim pots. The way that it sounds out of the box is very different. It has a huge sweep, especially in the lower range for riffing, low riffing. Um, it's low riffic. Ah, ah. Uh, um, and uh, a very steep cue. So it's very much, meow. it's very pronounced wherever you are. Um, and what I forgot to do on this one is the open position, which I'm also testing a lot, you know, just leaving it in one position, which is also important. If you have one like the um, Morley's that have a spring in it, which means it always goes back and turns off, you can't leave them in an open wire position. It's just a choice of the artist. This does sound phenomenal. I noticed that in the higher range, interestingly, even though Petrucci is a, you know, middly widdly shredder, um, when you go on the high E string above the 12th fret, it doesn't do too much anymore. I am pretty convinced that you can set that up internally. Out of the box, not so much for soloing, more for riffing, but I'm pretty sure, according to Trey from Gear Guards who tested this, you can set up anything. It does clock in at a hefty 259, and I'm pretty sure that the Petrucci name adds to that. It is quality, it is as heavy as the other Crybabies, but I'm pretty sure that smacking Petrucci on it uh, doesn't make it cheaper. So, it is a very good wah, but it does sound out of the box, very pronounced, and I like it. we have the Dunlop CB535Q. Well, that's not the crybaby. Saying crybaby a lot is kind of funny. Um, so that is another crybaby wah. Uh, crybaby sound, all this. What it does have is um, a changeable Q. So it's got two knobs on it. I think that's Q and maybe sweep width, something like this. Um, I don't like the fact that the knobs are not, the, they don't have a line on it that you can see black knob on black wire on the side, setting that up only ears, which is nice, but recalling your preset or recalling a setting that you like is more difficult. Why not give this better knobs, bigger knobs, or why not give this at least a little trim pot with a line on it? It's doable, other companies now do it. So Dunlop, please get with the program. On the right side of the wire uh, is a big ass knob. Oh, it's possible, look at that. L look at that in French. Um, and that is boost. How much does it boost? Mm, it's actually pretty cool. This thing can boost your amp. It is activated by a red push switch on the heel side. So you pretty much can take your foot and go click and activate the boost. It's pretty neat. Uh, it is quite a bit heftier in price than a crybaby. Uh, do you need the boost? If so, cool. Do you need to change the cue? Fine. But it clocks in at 179. 
Here are some uh, here we have the sounds. <laughs> Next up is the real McCoy, the one that kind of started it. It's solid, it's high quality, it's, you know, heavy, um, a beautiful chrome or that. It does do a phenomenal waka chika waka chika sound, you know, the shaft. Um, for cleans, for doing that, it's exactly what I expect from a wah, because it's the classic sound. I mean, that's where it came from. Um, However, 298 is the price. This is 300 euro, 298 euro. Um, no frills, in, out, volume, and when I put it on the floor, it didn't work. Um, it worked, but it didn't let any clean sound through. Um, I had to shake it around, stomp it a bit. All of a sudden, it, was, it started to work. Taking something out of the box that's 298 euro, that immediately doesn't work, doesn't instill a lot of confidence. Frankly, get a crybaby, that's what I'm gonna say. I mean, if, that, if this is what you're looking for, um, I would go crybaby, realistically. Uh, I know uh, this super wah fans out there might have a different opinion, but this is 300 bucks and it didn't really work out, out of the box without, you know, some shaking it around. Come on, come on. Check it out. Up is the Vox 845, um, 61 euro under Crybaby price. Crybaby dimensions, Crybaby everything, but not as heavy at all because this seems to be aluminum. Um, this is also no frills in out power 
one sound. Pretty damn hard stompy switch. Um, but it works. Does it sound phenomenal? Does it blow me away? No. If you need a light, which is very important for some pedal boards when you're traveling, a light, um, black looking wah, because in one song you use a wah, Box 845, 61 euro, doesn't break the bank. For that, it can be recommended. Now, if the Vox 845 doesn't uh, do it for you, spend a couple bucks more, and at 85 euro from Vox, you get the 847A. Sturdier build, chrome top, one sound, you know, no frills, in, out, all that. Uh, check out the sounds. to something a bit more special, which is the Full Tone Clyde Deluxe. There's a Clyde wire, and this is the Deluxe. Doesn't look like a crybaby at all, okay? Has its own design, comes with a lot of weight, and you have to leave some space on the portal, pe portal pedal, pedal, and you have to leave some space on the pedal board, um, to the left and the right for the knobs to, in order to see where they are and adjust them. So it does take up quite a bit of space not just this way, but also this way. So you can power this with 9 to 18 volt. And it's got a built-in buffer where you can select the level, but you can also turn that off. There's a on indicator which sticks out to the right, so that you can see that from above, which is nice. Um, input level which is neat in case you want the wire not to distort so much because some wires, because of their Q, which is pushing in, in the sense that it's a boost, um, are going to distort the clean signal a little bit. So you can adjust that. And there are three settings, whacked, jimmy, and shaft. Um, they are slightly different, you know, you have to have a little bit of a more trained ear. For me, you know, it wasn't a, oh my God, that's so different. But again, all these things are subtle differences. Now, um, this is of course handmade in the US. This is a quality pedal, technically. Um, 289. We are pretty much in the way up there territory along with the um, Real McCoy or the Exotic uh, or the Petrucci. Um, the problem with this is it was noisy as fuck. Now, it, this might be a defective unit, that's possible, but listen to the clips. 
there was a lot of noise and not the noise I want. So, if it's a defective unit, then all this handmade in the US and 289 euro doesn't necessarily mean you're buying quality. It might mean you're buying something that comes out of the box and is very, very hissy. Sorry, full tone. That is not enough. Check it out. <laughs> Next up is the Friedman Gold 72. No more tears. Get it? No more cry baby. Yeah. Um, lightweight. It is lighter than a crybaby, not quite as light as the Vox. Um, so I'm gonna say this is possibly aluminum, but a solid build. In, out, 9 volt and a three position switch where you're changing the sweep range, I think. Um, so very effective. It does make a big click when you switch the switch, but that's okay. It has a light on it. Good indicator, but it is a small light. I would like this to be bigger. Uh, possibly, why not make one here and here and here so the, the board illuminates and you know my why is on because there's nothing worse than starting the next song. And it's like, <laughs> and all of a sudden, you know, the next song doesn't work because your why is still on. So, yeah, good way to go, Dave, for putting an indicator there, but make it a little bit bigger. Sound wise, I love it. It immediately impressed me. I like it on all the way there. Um, just, it's just a good sounding one. It's under 200, so it's not in the ridiculous range, but it's also not in the, oh my God, what a steel range. So if you wanna spend some good money on a wine, get a good one, the Friedman Gold 72 does impress me. <laughs> Thank you. 
before we get to the uh, mini was, I want to point this one out. Um, I don't have a clip for this and I don't understand why I think I made a video about it. Log it up. I th I'm pretty sure I made a video about the, the two war. Um, I'm pretty sure I made a video for Toman, which I can't find. Um, I would have recorded it again, only that after a year and a half sitting on the shelf, I put it on the floor and nothing comes out. So, wires are not the most reliable things. Out of all these wires that I had on the floor, even new ones are hissy, don't, don't work. 300 year wire, real McCoy, doesn't work. Um, this is Karl Martin, this is, you know, Danish quality. And I love this thing, it's a great idea, but for some reason sitting on the shelf means it doesn't work anymore. But I still want to point it out, even though I don't have clips, check on my channel, there has to be a video. I can't find it. Um, the idea is you turn it on, you turn it off, and there are two settings, a red and a green. Uh, each one of them has three different sounds, so technically that's six wires in one. And you can have two at the same time by, there's a switch back here, healing down and clicking in that switch will switch between the two different settings. So you could have the waka chaka waka chaka sound, and then you want something for high soloing, and then you go click, and then you have the high solo sound. And then, then you want to go back to waka chaka waka chaka, maybe within the same song, you go click, and you switch to the two settings. The only thing is when you're going back and forth, you have to get used to not hitting that back switch. It has quite a bit of weight. It is not super expensive, as far as I know. Um, hundred and under 150 I think so uh, if you're looking for flexibility and switchability on stage check it out <laughs> The water. The what? Yeah, that's Chinese names for you. I was in China at the Moore factory when they were just about to release those. And they showed me the concept. Look, 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 Mini Wan. You can fold out the little things so you have more of a surface to stand on. And I told them, and they wanted to release like 10 of them at the same time, different wars and a volume or something. Like, why do you need 10 different wars? Well, they very quickly stamped that idea down. Um, but I immediately told them, to the left and right, you don't have stability. To the up and down, you don't have stability. I'm like, this is a stupid idea. I'm sorry, it's just too small. Plus, now imagine you have your board and a small wire, okay. But wherever you are on your board, your foot takes up the space that your foot takes up. So even if your wire is very small, you need to leave space around it because your foot, your whole foot goes on it, which means if you have pedals around it, you'll stomp on those pedals. So how much space are you saving by making the wah small? You need to have space around it so you can actually wah with it. So I don't think a small wah is really the solution because you're not saving up a lot of pedal board space and you don't have the stability when you're standing on it to really 
lean into it and st st stably, stabiliciously stand on it. I don't like small ones, which is why the next couple of videos, I'm gonna bitch about that. Here you go. Yeah, okay, small wars. Um, fine. 96 euro for the water, I wouldn't buy that. Um, Crybaby Mini, 119. Uh, I can spend 89 bucks on the Crybaby, which also gives me a stable footing when I'm wine, because I'm kind of leaning on there with my weight. Um, or I can spend more money for something smaller, less stable. Yeah, if you don't have the pedal board space or you don't want the weight, that's fine. I know Rob uh, Chapman loves the Crybaby Mini. I would go for the Crybaby because it's cheaper and it's not mini. I don't feel good wibbling around on this, but you have to make the choice. Spend more money for less. Here you go. Now we're going back to China to Hot Tone, down under the 100 euro mark again, 89 euro, and we have the Soul Press. Another small pedal. Okay, fine. Well, this is a little bit bigger, it's a little bit longer, she said. Um, it's not horrible to stand on it, it's also not very comfortable, so it's small wash don't work, I'm sorry. Um, the special thing about this is, it's a volume pedal, so you switch it to volume and all of a sudden in, out, volume with selectable heel down volume. Works well. You go to wah, and then it's a waka chuka waka chuka waka chuka. Wah sound is, if you need a wah, you know, here or there, Fine, it'll do the job. It's not gonna make you happy, but it'll do the job for under 100 bucks, and it's also a volume. Now, what this also is, is a an expression pedal. Now, that would've been so great if it's a in, out, wah, or volume. I gotta sneeze. <laughs> a wah, a volume. Um, and then there's a stereo out, TRS, for expression. And all you do is switch it to expression. And then you can um, control one of your pedals, like a delay or a whatever, a filter, with the expression pedal. On the next song, I want wah, I go wah. It's still connected on the board, it works. That's not how it works. This is either or, meaning the output functions as an expression output. So when you have this wired audio in, audio out for volume and wah, you can't use it as an expression because you have to disconnect that, connect your guitar another way, switch to expression. So this is a dual output, expression out and audio out. Uh, it can only be one. So that means you're buying this as a flexible pedal, yet on your board you can only use it as wah volume or expression. 
that's where I think they went wrong. They should have just had another output for expression and it can be all three at the same time. That would have been a pretty decent product for 89. This way, it's okay. Check it out. Now for two euro less than the soul press, why ever they have another product, I don't know, you get it without the expression output and then it's the wow press. Uh, says sounds like the crybaby, they both sound pretty pretty damn similar to me, I couldn't really determine a big difference. Um, so here you have volume again, you have wah. Okay, but you also have volume wah, which means uh, you click it in its volume, you know, leave it up, all fine. You click it again, it turns into the wah. You click it again, volume, click it again, wah. So that's kind of a neat feature, two euro less. Um, since you can't really use the expression function on the other one when you wanted to use as a wah volume, spend two euro less, get it in cool purple and have the ability to switch between the two. Why not? Okay. Yeah, I think that's a better choice. But it's not a choice because they're small. Don't buy small one. Have the Harley Benton Custom Line Wah, which pretty much is a an inexpensive OEM China version of the Crybaby, at not that much less. What is the Crybaby? Eighty nine bucks, I think that's what it was. Uh, Eighty nine. Okay. Fifty nine. Yeah, you're saving thirty bucks. Okay. Well, fine. Okay. It is two-thirds of the price. It has the same weight, it has a battery compartment, um, in-out volume, uh, uh, it has a light, unlike the Crybaby, which is nice, indicator. Um, Sound-wise, it doesn't floor me. It's not... Sometimes it's not very pleasant, it's too harsh. Um, 
it's not bad for the money, but it's not a, oh my god, what is steel kind of a wah, because sound-wise, there are better ones out there, sorry to say. Um, it does have a lot of uh, uh, weight and feels very, you know, high quality. It was on the shelf like some others that then didn't work anymore. Um, still works, built like a tank. If you need a wah, you know, here or there, don't spend the money, spend 59 and you're good. Now jumping from the Harley Benton budget wah to the Jam Pedals Wacko Plus. Hand painted, dirty as fuck. Um, I, I love the look and the feel of this. This is all just, let's smash some paint on there and take a lot of money. However, it does sound freaking phenomenal. It's absolutely one of my favorite wahs. Um, you have a sweep switch here, big ass cool red chicken head. No indicators, gives you different sounds, different sweep range. Um, in, out, nine volt. Um, it is a little bit loose. So uh, there is a hex screw in the back to tighten that, which I might have to do. Um, because you can't really leave it in an open position without possibly it falling down. Sound wise, it is delivering. Yes, it's 279, absolutely. I would buy this uh, before I would buy the real McCoy. Um, for that money, you could also, of course, get the Petrucci, which has more options inside. I don't like inside trim pots. They should always be on the outside because I want to fiddle around with them. Um, it is pricey, but it is handmade. And it sounds pretty damn good. <laughs>
Now here we have the exotic XW1 wire. Exotic wire one. Comes in red or white, I love the white, I love the chrome. And you can see in relationship to my shoe, it is smaller. I don't have it here, sadly. Um, but that has everything, it ticks all the boxes. It is not a mini wire, but it is smaller, so it does take up less space on your pedal board. And um, still is way big enough for normal wire usage. It has a red indicator, which means you can see that it's on, and you can uh, adjust the bias, the wire cue, the treble, and the bass. So it is a very flexible wire with four mini pots on the right side that have lines on them. Dunlop, look at those lines. Look at the lines. So, yeah, this one ticks all the boxes. It also takes the 300 euro mark, okay? Because it is 299. However, pretty damn good wah. It would be one of my favorites, I gotta say. in you for shits and giggles because I did the video. It's the Morley M2 Cliff Burton Fuzz Wah. It does a fuzz, it does wah, uh, you can uh, clicky that and all the controls are on top. Um, and it's a Morley so it does look very different. And Cliff Burton was a bass player. So that's the only video that you're gonna see for bass. But I made the video so here it is. <laughs> So after a lot, a lot, a lot of video now, you've seen a lot of wars. What you think is up to you. I'm gonna tell you what my favorites are. Um, under a hundred, to be honest, I would possibly just buy the Crybaby. Doesn't have a light, it has a lot of flaws, but it's like the go-to, it's like having a tube screamer. To be honest, I would probably buy the Crybaby. Um, in the 100 to 200 euro range, most certainly the Friedman. Hands down, that is fun. Uh, 200 to 300 euro range, there are three. Wacko Plus, because it's Wacko and it's, you know, handmade and it sounds great. Um, I would go for the Petrucci, because that has a very unique wire. It's not a crybaby. It's a very narrow, it's, it's just, it is fun. It is very different. If I did that kind of music, that's what I would get. Um, well, actually, I do that kind of music. 
Um, and uh, technically the king of them all for size, build quality, um, uh, just all the features being there and sound is the exotic XW1. Clocks in at 299, but you get the quality, smaller size, light, knobs on the outside, flexibility, absolutely recommended. Um, yeah, three in that range, but those three are good. Why do you have to spend that much money on a wah? I don't know, but apparently you do. Um, so, Crybaby, Friedman, those three. Thanks for watching. Please go to Tormund to see the full videos of uh, what I talked about. And use my links. That really helps me support me on Patreon. That way I can buy dog food. Um, and you've been great. Actually, I don't know, because you, you're sitting there. I don't know what you're doing. You might be in your underwear. I have no idea, which doesn't mean they're not great. I, know, I don't know what I'm trying to say. Animals at the end. <laughs>